Okay, so we're going to assemble the case for my Ultimate 64, turning it into the Ultimate RM64. This came from Germany and has been laser cut using acrylic 3mm. And here we are with the instruction manual of how to put the bad boy together. So at the moment I'm just looking through, checking the checklist and making sure we've got everything that we're going to need. So if we remove these 10 million foam thingies, which always remind me of cheesy watsits but don't taste quite as nice. And here we go with the top part, which is nicely protected with a piece of thin wood there. And having a look now at the bits and bobs we get with it, a few little baggies with all the screws and all the other little pieces we're going to need. So you can notice here we've got our Ultimate 64 board, all the acrylic screws and some blueberries, very important you will need some blueberries during this manufacturing process. Okie dokie, so best to get all the parts together first and then obviously follow the instruction manual a bit like a recipe. I do like to watch MasterChef Australia so I feel quite at home at this stage. Now the acrylic itself is protected with a sort of cellophane type coating. Uh, when you do laser cutting that's how you do it. So we're going to have to remove that and it's not going to be that kind of sky blue but it will be like a transparent like a window. So no colour basically. Don't know why problems are saying that. You can see my gorgeous Ultimate 64 board there. It's taken me a couple of years to get to this point, it's unbelievable, but just never quite got the right moment. And doing this kind of thing is not something I really enjoy, to be honest, although I do, of course, enjoy the results. So we're going to start removing the tape and get all the parts ready. Looks like my uh, tea might be getting cold there. And you can see where the blueberries have gone. Very important to know this. So the actual contents have come very well packaged, very secure. I can tell you as I'm doing this video commentary after we made it that there was no damage or anything like that. I will of course put a link in my video. Okie dokie, so here's the top part, we're just removing the protective cellophane now. I'm not sure it is cellophane, but that's the only word I can think of. Wrapper? I don't know. But uh, you just peel it off basically, it's a bit like a sticker, you might need to borrow somebody with some girly fingernails. And there we have the top part all ready to go and it looks absolutely superb. So one thing nice about these cases is you can have an engraving um, to your choosing. So I've got Ultimate RM64 for obvious reasons I hope. Here we've got one of the keyboard holders so there'll be three of those. Now one thing I want to stress is this is not necessarily a tutorial. In fact it's not a tutorial at all, it's more just a video to show you kind of if you're thinking of buying one of these what you might expect to get and what you might expect to do with it. I think this kind of assembly doesn't suit everybody. 
It is a good maybe hour's work the first time if you're cautious. And a word of warning, Perspex is not the hardiest of materials, especially 3mm. I have done some laser cutting with it before and it's extremely brittle. But for this project it suits very well. They've done a very good job of cutting the pieces correctly and making a sturdy unit, which of course is what you want. One other thing maybe to mention is this won't be something you can use with any other model of Commodore 64 motherboard. There are other cases for that and they're slightly bigger. So I recommend having a nice big work area and a good cup of tea ready. And of course reading the manual again and again. Reminds me very much of when uh, I used to like dicking around with Lego as a as a young boy. Double checking the instructions just to make sure. I think I recall there were about three different lengths of screw. Uh, what I did was put them into separate piles. If you do get all your piles mixed up, you might want to get medical attention. That was a joke, by the way. So occasionally you'll see some other twat put his hand in. This is being uh, put together at uh, the Swindon Makerspace. I will put a link to that if you're in the area. You're free. You're welcome to pop in and uh, say hello or check our website. Uh, I decided to do it here because there's a lot more space to work, and I can get some peace and quiet and concentrate. Also, there's other people to maybe help out, or just keep poking their nose in, which is what's happening in this case. I don't have three arms. I have two. So occasionally you'll see some other twat put his hand in. This is being... Uh, so next we're putting down, starting to build the, the base. Need to find the right screws of course and the right pieces to, to screw them into. I guess that's pretty obvious but... Well, I said it anyway. So going back to what I said about the fragility of acrylic at times, um, it's best to not screw things quite as hard as you normally do. Just put the screws in and kind of do it slowly and get them down to the right point. But I have, I have a tendency to push quite hard when I screw. Oh, title of my porn film there. But um, in this one, what I was doing was screwing down and then kind of st stopping right about a millimetre or less above the piece I was screwing to. Because you don't want to put too much pressure on acrylic. Make sure you have regular slips of tea because uh, that will help in the accuracy of the manufacturing process here. Okay now it's getting more exciting because it's time to actually place the board and have a look. That gives you an idea or a flavour of how it's going to look and already it's looking pretty cool I think. What you need to do is make sure you don't get too excited at this point and start rushing things, of course. There I am with my third arm again. Don't even know who that chap was. It was just some bloke who wandered in off the street. 
keeps pointing at things quite a lot and picking up things that he shouldn't be fiddling with put it back oh well he's right that is uh, where we're going to place these pieces here I'm not sure what to call those So for the record, I'm not a huge sort of expert in this uh, side of things and the kind of machinery that we use to do the keyboard cutting. I don't even know the names of these pieces. Uh, this is just obviously something I'm doing as a kit in kit form, as will you be. So for some of you, this might be a lot easier and a lot quicker. But I thought I'd make this video for someone pretty much like me who loves old computers and repairing and refurbishing etc but maybe doesn't have so much experience with this kind of project whilst building it I did consider whether it would be possible to laser cut your own cases I'm sure it would be but looking at the design it's fairly complex and there'd be a lot of exact measurements required I would guess to make the cost of the materials is probably just over half the price of the kit so I would say that's pretty fair enough so these are the pieces that the keyboard will sit on now one thing I did find with making this I'm not very good with things that wobble and have to come together at the same time and with some of this construction you'll find maybe some frustrating moments but stay calm and all will be well I'm sure so now we can slot the board in again and see how the keyboard relates to that so the keyboard actually sits slightly on top of the board not, not touching the board but over the board I suppose which is why it's quite a unique design it makes the machine fairly compact which is nice there's that annoying arm again we really need to get better locks on our doors he just keeps picking up things and fiddling with them I don't know what he's doing those hairy things there are actually my arms that's not a monkey that's uh, come in to help out so we've now stuck the six protectors on the bottom side of the board as you can probably see there they just stick on and we're now screwing the front part in which holds the whole case together at the end again I should emphasize that you have to be a little bit delicate with screwing down this the different parts of this board uh, this case excuse me there we go that's the front part done so we're all it's all coming together now and it's gone from a 2d bunch of parts and it's starting to look like a 3D case we're probably about halfway through at this moment at this juncture so we slot the keyboard razors I guess you call them and in those there are some screws with some square bolts that uh, hold the razors for the keyboard in place one thing really nice a lovely little detail was with all the parts you even got a um, screwdriver top the correct one that you're going to be needing which was a nice touch I thought the company that makes these it looks like they're not they're not Commodore specialists, they are people who are experts in 
cutting perspex amongst other things and making products out of them and you can tell that by the quality of this package and that I think makes it quite nice and quite unique in a, in a funny kind of way so what I'm basically doing is trying to see how it all comes together before assembling everything so as you can see I've had to take the posts away or some of them for the time being until most of this is getting it in the right order that's the key to it there we go those slot in now at the sides and they are cut on the right side for the ports as well um, specifically obviously for the ultimate 64 board and the reset switch there and now we can start actually screwing the board to the bottom part of the case so it's starting to come together so now we're going to pop the keyboard in place not necessarily to fix it but just to see how it's all going to come together it gives you a good sense of where you are in the process and where you're going next also it's nice to get a bit of a feel for what the finished article is going to be like. I do think it's rather nice that the keyboard sits over the board like that. Overall it's a very elegant design. It took me a couple of goes just to work out exactly how to feed the keyboard cable because being transparent obviously you don't want it covering the motherboard when it's completed. The whole purpose obviously is to show off the board to some extent. So I popped in the cable into the board just to see how it would fit together. I think some Commodore keyboards might have different lengths of connecting wires. I'm using one from a bread bin obviously. Um, not sure if the C64C might be different but definitely worth checking. But either way I'm sure you can hide because you've got the keyboard that's not transparent you could tape or glue maybe with a glue gun the, the cabling to the back side of the keyboard perhaps in my case it was fine though the cable is well hidden So that's how it's going to look with the keyboard in place. So now am I going to actually attach the keyboard using the screws and nuts? So these are little square shaped nuts that just simply uh, sit in the acrylic and then the screw will obviously attach to them through the top of the keyboard using the three holes that are already there so just to reiterate or just to make clear uh, the only cutting you need to do is the is to remove the front panel as as I did at the beginning of this video once that's done then no further modifications are necessary Now I'm sure there are many ways of doing that. Um, I think the method I used was basically to cut first, smooth out the rough edges uh, with finer and finer tools and then finally finish with some sandpaper. Uh, also I'd recommend putting some, perhaps cutting a strip of black electrical tape to go along the front. Although I didn't in the end because I didn't have any and to be honest I haven't noticed it since using the machine. Uh, completed. Another thing I didn't do in the end was put any LED lighting in. I may do that um, but to be honest it's a nice machine as it is and I'm not sure if I want to work on this at least not at the moment. I, I may do in the future. 
There are strip LEDs you can buy with little remote controls fairly cheaply that mean you can actually control the lights from outside um, with remote control. So I might consider that, but that's for a future project. Maybe. Always good to look at the instructions a number of times and make sure you're on track and haven't missed a step. It is pretty much like following, like I said, a recipe. Also good just to have a look around and make sure everything's as it should be. A nice shot of my crotch there. Lovely. So we've got pieces at the back as well as the side. So I guess it's not that surprising, but some people I hear have made cases by just doing the tops and bottoms uh, and keeping the side parts open because they are probably the most fiddly parts to laser cut but in this case of course buying a professional piece of kit like this everything is uh, is as it should be Okay, so finishing touches, just putting on the last remaining back plates, which are in three different parts through the cartridge and the serial area and the other side of the board with the USB sockets. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of footage, but there is the completed machine there. Looks absolutely stunning. I think I've gone with the right decision by using the older style bread bin keyboard which I think the, the colour scheme with the greens and the browns and the blacks work very well indeed. Final touch is to put the screws into the case pillars and this is the part where it does say in the manual to be very careful this is the part where you really want to be careful not to follow your instincts and screw down too hard, I would say. The top part there, which you didn't see me put on, but that just kind of slots on top. And then there's four screws at the back and one at the front, which holds the whole case together. And obviously at this point it feels a lot more stable. And that's pretty much it. There's our finished gorgeous looking machine. Quick inspection. and we're pretty much good to go. Overall I do recommend this case although it won't be for everybody. You do need a a way of cutting down a keyboard and b the time and patience to put the whole case together and obviously some tools might be needed in that process. The whole thing does obviously take time to put together. Um, possibly having a workshop would be preferable, although not essential. There's our finished machine. Just got to put that final screw in. And voila, there it is. Feels good, looks great. Could be improved with some LED lighting, but I'm really happy with it. So you can get this from the web address that I've put in the YouTube description there. Thanks for watching. Retro Marquee out.